You might be familiar with counting problems described in your math class as permutations and combinations, and you might have seen formulas and symbols like NPR and NCR, but that stuff is not really what's tested. You don't have to know those symbols, you don't need to know what a permutation or even a combination is, but you do need to know how to work these kinds of problems. An accounting problem is basically answering the question, how many ways can we arrange things in orders or groups? Let's look at some examples. You have four shirts and four, sorry, five shirts and four pairs of jeans. How many different outfits can you make? So let's imagine, let's draw this out. I've got five shirts, so we'll say shirt A, B, C, D, and E. And then I've got four pairs of jeans, so we'll say jeans one, jeans two, jeans three, jeans four. How many different outfits can you make? So obviously we have to pick one shirt and one pair of jeans. Well, let's see, if I started with A as my shirt, I could take jeans one, I could use jeans two, jeans three, jeans four. So right there, that's four outfits with just A alone. With B, I could use B as my shirt, and then I can do one, two, three, and four. So that's another four. You can probably see the pattern. With C, I can use that shirt, and then I can use one, two, three, or four for that. So that's another four. And then on it goes, right? So I get another four here, and another four here. So I have five fours, which is 20. So I would have 20 different ways, or 20 different groups, or 20 different kinds of outfits that I can make based on this. But there's a shortcut. All you have to do is say this. Well, really, it's just five times four. And what you can do for these is you write the number of lines for the number of choices you've got. And then you say, for the first choice, how many choices do I have? Well, I've got five, so I'll write five. And for my second slot, which is the number of genes, how many choices of genes do I have? Well, I've got four. And then you just multiply the numbers. So five times four is 20. And that's pretty much it. Let's just look at some examples. And obviously, we'll have more in SAT Math Tactics. But let's look at some quick ones. 12 ice skaters are competing in the final match. How many different ways could you award gold, silver, and bronze medals to skaters in this group if you only have one of each medal? So we're assuming here, you know, we're just a ra randomly giving out gold, silver, and bronze. So in theory, we could say, well, I've got 12 sk ice skaters, so ice skater 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 12. And then I could say I could do 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 4, 1, 2, 5, 1, 2, 6, right? Hundreds, I don't know how many combinations there are, but we'll find out in a second. Just so many different orders, it's going to be crazy. So let's not list them out because that's going to be impossible. Let's instead draw our lines and say, how many choices do I have for the gold medal? Well, I've got 12, right? I can pick any of the 12 ice skaters. Once I've made that choice, how many choices do I have for the silver medal? Well, again, don't say 12 because I've already picked one of those 12 for the gold, so I'll just have 11 left at that point. And what about bronze? Well, I've picked out two already for the gold and the silver, so I've got 10 choices for bronze. Now I go ahead, multiply these out. And I get 1,300, oops, that's a horrific three, 1,320 different orders of you know, how I could arrange the gold, silver and, metal, silver, and bronze medals. Let's look at one more example. There are 10 dancers in your group. You need to arrange them into pairs for the competition. How many different pairs of dancers could you create? Okay, let's see, I've got two positions. How many do I have for the first? Well, I've got 10. How many do I have for the second? Well, I've got nine. Right. Pick one of my 10. Once I've picked one, I have nine left. So I multiply them out and I get 90. But be careful because the answer is actually 45. And the reason why, this is a little bit of a thing that gets into permutations and combinations. It just comes down to the difference between picking orders, which we're doing here, and picking groups. Here the order mattered. Here it mattered that such and such person got gold, this person got silver, this person got bronze. If I, let's say I said person A got gold, B got bronze, and C got silver. Oh, sorry, A got gold, B got silver, C got bronze. If I switch this around and I made it B, A, C, that's a different order, right? That's a different scenario because B is getting gold. Whereas here, if I have dancer A and I have dancer B, and then I also pick dancer B and dancer A, that's the same pair. There's no order. If that had something to do with order, then it matters. For the purpose of the SAT, whenever you're looking for groups where you you're in this situation, just divide your answer by two. There's a whole reason for it. It gets into combinations and all that junk, but we don't really need to know it for the test. Just remember, if you're looking for something where order doesn't matter, or you're just looking at groups of people, you divide by two, and that should give you your answer. So this one is 45.